Today we get an incredible example of the difference between somebody who is polite and somebody who decides to start the fight with verbals. Hi friends, welcome to today's bonus badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I am your host as always, John Correa. And I'm your co-host, Mike Bullover. Today's video comes to us from Jacksonville, Florida. Zero Nine Solutions is a member of our holster consortium focused on duty gear for law enforcement officers and for private citizens who are using load-bearing vests. They got all kinds of great stuff. Their radio holder is incredibly cool and really good. Check them out at 09holsters.com in the link in the description. This traffic stop has begun because the officer observed this vehicle make an illegal U-turn. We got plenty of badge cam audio on this one. Let's listen in. Hey, how y'all doing? How are you, you sir? You mind rolling the back window down? I can't see in the back. Oh, hey, how y'all doing? If you all could just do me a favor, make sure your hands, I can see all y'all's hands, okay? Right. I'm doing good. Is this your car? This is my, my godmother's car. Your grandmother's? Godmother. Your godmother. Okay. Yes, I got you. Yes, sir. Um, okay. Whatever you need, whatever you need, I'm cooperating, whatever you need. All right. You got a good driver's license yes, on you? Do. You do? Okay. All right. Um, where are you all headed to? I was going to Walmart. Go, go see what yeah. I find out it was closed. That's why I busted you turn. I got you. And then I was just heading home. Did you realize that's why I pulled you over? Yes, sir, I know. Okay, I, I was just yeah, checking. Just because the light was, I, I thought just because the light was red and then there was no one coming, I could actually make that U-turn. Okay. But that's the only reason I did bust the U-turn for with the light being red, because technically, I mean, it doesn't say don't bust the U-turn on red. Okay. It just says yield. So okay, so I when it's a red arrow, it basically means don't go. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir, you're right. Okay. Correct. All right, um, you got your ID on you real quick? Yes, Any firearms in the vehicle or yes, anything sir. like that? No. May I turn off the car? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Well, I do know my, my ID by my heart. Can you roll this I, I, I Where's do. your ID at? I left it at home. I was going to Walmart. No, I, you I, left it at home? Do you have a good license? Yes, sir, I do. That's okay. why I can give you everything, whatever you need. Okay. Car, Go ahead, step out the vehicle, man. Yes, sir, no problem. Whatever you need, you need. Turn around. Do you mind if I check you for Please weapons? Do. Is bag that just chip. a little bit of weed in your pocket? No, sir, it's a bag of chips. Bag of chips? Bag of chips, sir. Uh, it's just keys. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, no, no, no. Just slide back here with me. Let me get your ID real quick. Right. Oh, boy. I don't actually, but I do have I know my ID number by heart. And it's me. Yolanda's Lamar. You do, do you have a driver's license? Yes, you sir. You just got to have a, a no, state I, ID I, card. I have a driver's license with uh -huh. my name on it. Uh -huh. Everything is just okay. a, it's at the house. I know it's it. at the house. Okay. I know my whole number by okay. heart. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, Quick question, do you have a medical marijuana card? Yes, I do. Okay. Where is that at? That's also at the house. Okay. And um, I do have the, the code and everything for that. That's why, if, if possible, as far as getting my phone, because I do have a marijuana card. You have a card. picture of it? Yes, sir. Okay. Does everyone in there have a medical marijuana card? I'm not sure about that. Them, but that's why I was driving. Okay. As far as just in case of having. All right. You have your phone on you that you could show me the medical marijuana? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and grab the phone. Look that up real quick. Yes, sir. I'm gonna pull up the email if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, go ahead, go ahead, uh, yeah, put your sure. stuff on the car. Yeah. You don't got your ID on you, so you're just gonna hang out in the back yeah, of my car, all right? Just put yourself on there. Yes, sir. On top of the car. Go ahead, slide in. Yes, 
I'm going to go ahead and take him out. Passenger. Quick question. Do you have a medical marijuana card? Sir, I don't answer any questions, sir. Okay, I step out of the vehicle for me. I can show you my... I can show step you. out of the vehicle for me. Do not reach behind your back. I'm not reaching behind step my back. Step out of the vehicle. You, you reaching for your weapon. Because sir. you reached behind your I'm back when I told you to I step got, out of the I, car. I, step sir, out of the car, do it now. I, I mean, I got, step out of the car, do it I, now. I got my... Listen, step sir. out of the car Listen, when I, I, I tell you to. I'm you, sir. Hey, hey, You're stop gonna do it now. You know I am, sir. Stop you know who I am. Stop reaching. Listen, sir. I'm a brother, sir. I can show you. I can show you my identification, sir. Keep both sir. your hands up, just like you're doing now. Hey, do you understand keep me? Your pull your gun out. I got a weapon on me, sir. I know you got one. Yeah. Hey, I, I hey stop! Out, pull your gun out! Hey, stop! Sir, stop! I'm putting my hands right now, sir. I'm putting my hands up, sir. Sir, you got me right here, sir. Get on the ground. <laughs> Shots fired. We're at Dunlap Turner. We got one running eastbound. On, keep keep it on him. Eastbound on Dun Avenue. Send rescue 1067. We got one down. Do not move! Sit, Do you understand? Passing Lim Turner or the Walmart. Keep your eyes on him. I'm coming right down the road. If you go read the news story that I have linked in the description, our perp actually lived through that, was shot several times. He is facing, as I'm sure you could recognize, a corner plethora of charges and no one else was harmed. The driver was in the back seat of the police cruiser. He wasn't involved in this at all. The three passengers in the back seat all scurried off during this time. They did catch two of the three, and we're gonna think lessons. Pretty good shooting on that officer's part. Hey, have you checked out the Active Self-Protection Podcast? We've had some incredible episodes lately. It's just getting better and better. Every week we have a, a, a new guest. It comes out Fridays now instead of Wednesdays, so uh, check it out. Or listen to it on your commute. Listen to it on your way to Grandma's house. Listen to it wherever you want. Mike, the whole beginning of this one, I think, is a really excellent interaction between an officer and a private citizen where both were respectful. We knew we'd done a couple things wrong, but this driver, I think, did everything perfect. You know, we, we might disagree a little bit on this one. He was almost too... Uh, too accommodating, like the hands way out of the car. That would be a small, small red flag for me. Nothing to get super worried about. But yeah, to, to your point, everyone here is behaving themselves and being cordial and, and being forthright and friendly. So right now, nothing crazy is jumping out at me about this stop as being particularly any more dangerous than any other stop. Well, and, and listen, I, I get it, okay? In, in 2022, a, a black man being worried about getting shot by the police I get it, right? And that might lead him to kind of over-exaggerate his compliance. But I think, uh, you know, on the whole, he's, he's polite, he's professional, he recognized, oh, I didn't think that was a big deal. Yes, sir, no, sir, those kinds of things. And, and I really think for the most part, if you are polite, you don't play stupid games with cops and try to, you know, get out of stuff and, and play gotcha games, it'll probably go pretty well for you. And I think this officer and this private citizen really kind of show that. And I admire this guy recognizing that it could be a tough time. For sure. Uh, like you said, everyone was uh, cordial and well-behaved here. I, I didn't love the way he let him grab the phone without watching where his hands were going. It turns out that was okay. It was the phone and not something else, as right. it turns out. But as we now know, there was a gun on the hip of his partner in the other seat, so that could have gone poorly, but no, you know, no, no harm, no foul. Now, of course, everything's going to go to heck at this point, right? Because now we're going to get to the second guy. And, and because officers smell marijuana, that's why he's asking that. And, and this guy comes back with... I don't answer questions, sir. And, and while that is your constitutional right, right? I don't have to answer any questions. It really does mark you off as somebody who's combative and a jerk. If you're wearing what appears to be body armor and carrying a, a pistol with an extended magazine, 
I, I just think common sense would lead you to be at least cordial about it. This is a very abrupt statement for him to make. And you can see the officer's attitude change very quickly. Listen, it's your constitutional right not to say anything on a traffic stop. It's, you know, if you're worried about the road pirates interrupting your free travel, all that sort of stuff, that's your business. However, there's a way to go about it. Uh, this cop is already, you know, it's the middle of the night. Uh, he's got one partner with him, but it's dark. There's a lot of variables here. He doesn't need to be dealing with this in this moment is you're just making things worse and i do think the officer handled it in a very professional manner he said you know listen okay well then step on out of the car i'm not going to argue constitutionality with you on the side of the road but i have to make sure that you're safe i got to make sure that there's nobody in the car who's going to hurt me and make sure that you know there's nothing else going on so he says step out of the vehicle for me okay fine Nope, I want you out of the vehicle because that vehicle is where there's bad stuff there. Now, of course, he, st he starts asking, wait a minute, you're reaching for your gun, officer. And, and again, there is a difference in the time when we say that a police officer can draw their firearm versus a private citizen. And as an officer, you need to be confident in, in the, your knowledge of, hey, am I, doing, am I where I am legally? Am I doing a legal thing? And, and do, have, has it reached the point where I'm in fear for my safety enough that uh, at least threatening deadly force is justified. I think those, those, those three things have been met here. Uh, this person is, is not cooperative. He's initially refusing to get out of the car. A Supreme Court precedent says you can get, get people out of a car in a legal traffic stop. So that's, we're not gonna debate that on the side of the road. And I think this is a point at which he probably saw the body armor and he's like, what's going on with this guy? Uh, he reaches behind him. That's a furtive gesture. Better to just, like we're always saying on the channel, Better to employ a little bit of violence early to avoid a lot more violence later, which and, I think is what he's trying to do here. And I think as a general rule as a private citizen, it's one of the reasons that you don't want to wear body armor because not it may not be illegal in your jurisdiction, but it certainly is suspicion raising. It certainly is one of those things that you're like, okay, that's so far outside the Overton window for most people. Note to self, make people Google the words Overton window. Yes. Uh, but but it, it, it causes suspicion and, and worry. Okay, fine. Now, I think there's a weird thing going on here. That, that as the officer's starting to put him in cuffs, he sees the gun and then just, he like even kind of fondles it a little bit and then goes back to what he was doing. Do you think it would have been smarter here to just take possession of that gun even without him in cuffs? Could be. It's a 50-50 for me. It's a, it's a real wobbler because I think what he was trying to do is he sees the gun and he's like, okay, I've got control of his hands. Let me just get handcuffs on him and then I'll disarm him. Reason being, if he has to take his hand off of this guy's right arm to grab the gun, now that guy's right arm is free, they're gonna be fighting for the gun. So I think that was probably his reasoning was, hey, let me get the guy cuffed, he's already almost cuffed. And, and you're making those determinations in literally split seconds, right? Like, what am I gonna do here? And, and this guy has been a little combative, but of course, that means he's gonna be one of those guys who really wants to assert his rights, and so I wanna be especially careful not to violate his rights. And so all those things go through your head, and, and so far he has, I mean, he's been a little bit verbally aggressive, not aggressive, but non-compliant, but that's not the same as being physically non-compliant. And so it's, it's a tough one to do. Now, of course, everything's gonna go right to heck here because the guy's gonna decide, no, I wanna get. So, so, you know, he's like, hey, keep your hands up, do the thing. And the guy's like, oh, oh, hey, do that. Now, I think it's interesting when he asks his partner to, to hey, I want your gun out. And, and it seems they have a hard time communicating that because I don't think he sees what the, the challenge is here it might just be a visibility thing. Now, now, when the fight starts, this guy's not just trying to run away. And one of the big things that we see here is if he's just trying to run off, eh, maybe, but he's not. He's turning around and you can see the fist balling up, coming in to strike the officer. This is now a very significant issue and it escalated there quick. Yeah, at this point, uh kind of all bets are off at this point. I don't know if that body armor is real or not. If I'm that officer, I have no idea. It could be just a carrier with nothing in it. Right. I'm, I'm thinking about uh, my backstop. I'm thinking about where is this guy headed? Is he about to pull the gun? Is he about to punch me in the face? What's about to happen? And I think he, he reacted probably as best as he possibly could have. I would have liked to have seen him when he had him against the car, really get on top of that guy and, and mobilize mobilized. Put a little him. weight on him. Yeah, and have, have the partner come retrieve the gun, but that wasn't what happened, so here we are. Yeah, and, and so there's a, there's a lesson there. Again, if I, if I am worried about physical resistance and I've got him up against a barrier, man, using that barrier to really push on him can keep me from having to use more force later because I've got him pinned where he's at. Not, not a big critique there, a small thing. I think this officer did a really a pretty darn fine job altogether. Now, I will say, next thing that I really think, and, and I just want to take a moment and celebrate this fine officer, because how many times have we seen an officer who has something in his support hand, like his cuffs, and ends up trying to shoot with that thing in his support hand, but lo and behold, our officer dropped the cuffs to put two hands on the gun. Indeed he did. 
hopefully, with any luck, he is, he is a person who watches and subscribes to the Active Self-Protection main channel and the expert channel, and we're changing the world. He listened to our advice, and he practiced dropping things out of his support hand. Maybe. Or maybe he just got good training by somebody completely unrelated. But I think it also leads me, this officer is clearly carrying a, uh, you know, a custom firearm. He's got a firearm with a, a flared magwell, a light on it, an optic, which is a high quality optic as well. Looks like an Acro P2 to me. And, and so knows what he's doing, probably trains outside of his department training, gets two hands on the gun because this guy's shooting at him right now. And he knows I need all the marksmanship I can get. Yep. I mean, have, having that optic, as, you, as you're always saying, uh, really makes these sorts of shots a lot easier to make. Uh, you could tell he trains. He's got good grip. Uh, he has a gun that's sort of outside the norm, probably probably not a department-issued uh, gun, or at least it's got some tricky stuff on it to make it a little more effective. So, you know, officers, if you're watching this, remember your marksmanship skills are, are the difference between life and death, potentially. This could happen to you in any given shift. So make sure your gun is in good working order. Make sure it's clean. Make sure it's zeroed. Make sure you're confident in your marksmanship skills because at the moment of truth, you're going to want all those things to be uh, a no-brainer. Yep. We did see in the middle of that a reload. He did uh, run the gun dry and get a reload, did a good job of it. Officers should absolutely be carrying multiple reloads. I'd recommend at least three. Here we can see on the camera that our bad guy, though he went down because he was shot, he's pushing himself up here and continuing to fire at the other officer. So now I'm not sure why this, uh, why our officer's badge cam, he came this far in this direction. But he turns around and he needs to fill this guy in from about... 28 yards if my measuring sticks were correct and man that's a pretty darn good shot this is when the dot helps but also your grip and your trigger control have to be on yeah and combat breathing is probably a good idea at this point too because your adrenaline's going uh, i know i sound like a broken record your adrenaline's going it's pumping your blood is pumping your heart is pumping you're physically potentially shaking at this point you know, a 28-yard shot is not is not a gimme on a, no, on, a no. on a range with no no one shooting back at you. But he's he's he is where he is for whatever reason. He broke left here. He is where he is. He sees there's an issue. His partner is getting shot at. He needs to take care of it, and he is confident clearly in his marksmanship and his equipment at this distance. Now, I do want to point out here. You can see right here that there's a little puff of smoke just a little bit low, and that means the officer pushed that shot just a little bit low. But at these kind of distances on a hard surface like asphalt. Don't actually mind the low shot. I would rather miss a little low than a little high because that bullet's gonna skip up off the concrete at a very low angle and there's a good chance it'll still actually hit. Whereas if I miss him high, it's off into the wild blue yonder and we don't know. Yeah, and this guy needs to be shot until he stops doing what he's doing. Yeah, there's, there's, there, those behavior no changes. Yeah, to any of these shots, I have no problem with any of them. Uh, this guy's a threat to his partner. And yeah, the, the, the low miss, just as you said, if it's going to go anywhere, it's going to skip off the pavement probably at about an inch or two and continue yep. in the same direction it's going. And he gets he gets a deformed bullet from for his trouble. Yeah, well, and so I think he did a great job here. I really do think that, that this officer shows some really incredible professionalism in that gunfighting aspect. I think he did a darn fine job. I think that he showed some really good work beforehand as well. Now, in the follow-up, man, Adrenaline is a heck of a drug, and it takes about 50 IQ points off you, about 10 seconds after all the bad things go away. So now you go from, you know, I'm sure this officer is a Mensa member, so he's 140, and now all of a sudden, you know, he's eating crayons because he's got all that cortisol in his system. And so, man, you gotta recognize that after a deadly force encounter. Yeah, dumb brain, lizard brain, call it what you want. It's a, it's a very real thing. I mean, you can get it without even having been in a shooting, quite frankly. You can get it after a really bad knockdown, drag out fight. But he did a great job of staying in, in control of his faculties, uh, getting reasonably good comms out on the radio, didn't say a bunch of unnecessary stuff, uh, directing other people. I think he did a phenomenal job here in the aftermath. Good job all the way around. I think he covered his ass.